Hello and welcome to the announcement of the first ever National Centre for Writing Early Career Awards, comprising the Desmond Elliott Prize, the UEA New Form Award and the Laura Kinsella Fellowship. My name is Chris Gribble, the Chief Exec of the National Centre for Writing, and it's a real pleasure to bring you these awards today. At the heart of the NCW Early Awards and standing as its flagship is the Desmond Elliott Prize, the country's most prestigious award for first novels, a prize committed to supporting a writer's career over the longer term something that really makes it perfect as the centrepiece for these awards. The winner of the Desmond Elliott Prize receives a cheque for £10,000, vital to buy space and time to write. The winner is also, however, offered a tailored package of support over the 12 months after the award, part of our commitment to help create a sustainable career for writers in what can be a really tough industry. It's a real pleasure to introduce you, first of all, to the judges for this year's Desmond Elliott Prize 2020. Priti Taneja, our Chair of Judges, was the winner of the 2018 Desmond Elliott Prize for her debut We That Are Young, published by Gally Beggar Press. It's been listed for many awards, including the Folio Prize, the Shark Debat First Book Award and the Prix Jan Mikalski. Sonia Soda is the Chief Leader Writer at The Observer and Deputy Opinion Editor at The Guardian. She's an author in her own right and a regular contributor to news and current affairs programmes, including Question Time, Sky News Review and The Today Programme. Sinead Gleeson's debut collection, Constellations, Reflections from Life, won New Fiction Book of the Year at the 2019 Irish Book Awards. Her essays have been published in Granta and broadcast by BBC and RTE. What I loved about The Girl with a Louding Voice by Abby Dare is the novel's irrepressible energy. There's a sense of spontaneity in the writing which can only be achieved through very, very careful work. Set in and around Lagos, Nigeria, the story follows 14-year-old Aduni as she struggles against huge odds to achieve her dreams. As soon as you open this book and start reading, you meet a character that's so fully realised she just walks out of the book and announces herself. Though terrible things do happen to Aduni, this is far from a tale of woe. It's a book that just revels in the power of language to deconstruct authority, making it funny, subversive and hugely hopeful. As a judging panel, we really loved The Private Joys of Nona Maloney. This is a novel so full of warmth and joy that reading it felt like being enveloped in a big hug. The book is a funny and poignant exploration of the relationship between a mixed race girl from Manchester with her white mother. It follows Nona's efforts to grapple with her identity and heritage given she has never met her dad and the impact this has on how she and Joni relate to each other. The novel brilliantly and richly captures the relationship between mother and daughter. They're two characters that I identified with immediately and liked immensely. And in many ways, it was difficult to believe that they were written by a man. We think this is a book that will captivate readers from its first few pages and that will appeal to a very wide readership. That reminds me by Derek Owusu tells the story of a young boy growing up in London to Ghanaian parents. And it's a book that deals with identity and expression. And it's told in quite an episodic nature, which only serves to highlight its fragmentary risk-taking imperatives. It's breaking down language in a completely unique way. It's a very symphonic book. It's full of musicality. And it speaks to issues that are timeless, race, poverty, class, inequality, issues that we're all currently dealing with in the world we live in today. And for me, quite simply, this was an extraordinary and distinct piece of work. When Sonia Sinead and I began reading The Long List, we were looking for novels in which any formal inventiveness was both justified and sustained which combined their politics with a poet's control of voice and brought us characters written with clear-eyed compassion. We were really hoping for a book that transcends its craft, which offers that mysterious reading experience of lifting us to a deeper understanding of our world. In the end, our winning book presented itself to us, and I think we knew as soon as we encountered it that this was the one. 
Our winner is a book woven of myths, desires and failures that say something hugely important about the past and its ravages, about our contemporary moment and about what better future we might make if we could just see the world through its characters' eyes. In this book, every word matters. There are reversals of meaning so surprising and so completely successful that they feel inevitable. It is written in concentrated fragments and each holds its own. The whole effect made us want to weep while also showing us how to deal with the siblings that we love but who enrage us, the parents who let us down and the carers who step in. It is a significant addition to a contemporary literary canon and to a British canon and to a black British canon because for all its universality, this is an intimate, intense and very specific exploration of the life and times of Kay, a young British Ghanaian working class man sent into care as a baby and returned to his family aged 11 in London and he must now negotiate the city and its ruptures. Nuanced in its exploration of Kay's fractured mind, alive with his personal creed of love, this book exposes Kay's determination and his vulnerability in a society that pushes him to its edges. Its ending deploys narrative structure with an understated power that left me reeling. No matter what I tell you about this book, I'm sure I cannot spoil the effect of actually reading it, such is its literary achievement. I am speaking, of course, of That Reminds Me by Derek Owusu, who I'm very happy to announce is the 2020 winner of the Desmond Elliott Prize. Congratulations, Derek, on your unique and beautiful novel. I hand back now to Chris Gribble, director of the National Centre for Writing. Our second award is the UEA New Forms Award created in partnership with the University of East Anglia's world-famous creative writing programme. We asked for entries that explored how creative writing might experiment with form, genre, platform and performance, and we really weren't disappointed by the outstanding range of entries that we received. The winner of the UEA New Forms Award will receive a cash prize of £4,000 and a bespoke programme of support delivered by the National Centre for Writing. Our judges for this award were Inua Elms, an acclaimed internationally touring playwright, performer, graphic artist and designer. He's the author of four books of poetry and his play Barbershop Chronicles sold out its run at the National Theatre. Dr Claire Hines teaches creative writing at the University of East Anglia. Her theatre monologues have been performed at the Contact Theatre in Manchester and her fiction listed for the Bath Short Story Award. Henry Sutton is Professor of Creative Writing and Crime Fiction and Director of Creative Writing at UEA. The author of 12 novels, he's the co-founder of the Norwich Crime Writing Festival, and Peggy Hughes, the programme director here at National Centre for Writing in Norwich. I'm absolutely delighted to announce that the winner of the UEA New Form Award for 2020 is Taylor Beidler from London. Hailing from New York City, Taylor's project explores non-traditional storytelling and aims to synthesise her work as a playwright, performance artist and creative non-fiction writer. The judges noted that Taylor's project and writing uses a personal story to powerful, measured effect, blending solid storytelling with performance and audio forms. They found her work experimental, different, and felt emotionally connected to and very moved by the writing. Congratulations. Our third award is the Laura Kinsella Fellowship. Created in partnership with the Laura Kinsella Foundation, this award has been designed to support an exceptionally talented early career writer of literary fiction who has experienced limiting circumstances or whose voice is underrepresented in current literary fiction. The Laura Kinsella Fellow will receive a cash prize of £4,000 and a bespoke programme of support delivered by National Centre for Writing. Our judges for this award were Alice Jolly, the winner of the Royal Society of Literature V.S. Pritchard Award in 2014 and the Penn Ackley Award 2016. She was the runner-up for the Rathbone's Folio Prize in 2019 and long-listed for the RSL and Darcy Prize in 2019. Rupa Faruqi is a doctor working in the NHS and the award-winning author of six literary novels for adults, published in over 20 countries. She's been shortlisted for the Women's Prize for Fiction three times. And the final judge was myself. I'm really delighted to announce that the inaugural winner of the Laura Kinsler Fellowship for 2020 is Michelle Perkins from Taunton in Somerset. Michelle lives in the rural southwest, 
originally trained as a nurse and became the first member of her family to attend university when she studied at Goldsmiths in the 90s. After some major life challenges, she rediscovered writing as a means to make sense of her difficult family history, and the judges were absolutely unanimous in their praise for her ownership and mastery of a visceral, knotty language at once incredibly powerful and blessed with great rhythm. They praised the poetic pragmatism that characterised her voice and felt she could go on to be a bold and brilliant voice in her own right. Really delighted for you, Michelle. I'd like to end by thanking our supporters at UEA, the Laura Kinsler Foundation and the Desmond Elliott Trust. Thanks also to Arts Council England. Their commitment to new talent and new voices has matched our absolute passion to bring new readers for these writers in the future. And thank you for your support. I'd like to thank also everyone who entered for these awards. It's been an incredible privilege to read the work that's emerged and been sent to us. Can't wait for 2021. Have a look at www nationalcentreforwriting.org.uk sign up for more information about the awards next year. 